Hi everybody, welcome back to the shop. Uh, just a quick one. Uh, I figured I'd do a quick update. Been doing a lot of the lacing, not really recording that. But uh, touching on a little bit of the fuselage wiring and some can, can bus considerations you might want to think about. Also decided to go with the LC50 lighting controller. Talk a little bit about that in the video. And then uh, cleaning up some stuff, you know, connectors for the trim servo and also um, some... Uh, plates for the antennas as I start thinking about uh, what I need to do there. Anyway, hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, cheers. Bye. Hey everybody. Uh, doing some more of the wiring, lacing. Um, as you can see in here, I've been working on the connectors for both the pitch and the raw servo here and making sure I figure out how those all go together. And this, of course, is the wire that goes back into the back here to the uh, the trim servo. Um, so that's, you know, I've been wiring that up, just kind of doing a fit here to see how well it's gonna fit in the plane, make sure I've got it the right lengths. And then, uh, you know, what's nice about the lacing these together, it makes the bundles a lot simpler to kind of understand how they're gonna run. So I'll be able to run those down through those tubes I have here up along and they come up into uh, the cockpit area where they'll connect in the panel and these wires include uh, the power um, the CAN bus and some of the communication stuff that come back so for instance from the trim motor there's the position so that it can be displayed on the panel one thing you'll want to think about and I had to redo it a little bit for myself not a big deal because I hadn't done it yet but uh, originally, I was thinking the CAN bus, I would connect, um, bring it down to the yaw servo, and then I would bring it out to the, um, the servo for the elevators. Well, if I do that, I've got to run all the way out to the wing to the elevator, then I've got to bring it all the way back and bring it up to the panel. So instead, what I've decided is um, I'll have the the servo in the wing be the end of one of the runs so that'll be the end of one side of the actual CAN bus and then I'll come in come up through the panel from the panel I'll go back down to the back and then I'll end up having an end in the back of the plane so it's something you want to think about as you plan out your wiring make sure you think and take into consideration otherwise I mean it's not a big deal running the wire out but it just makes the the cabling a little more or the wiring a little more complicated and it just this simplifies it I think in my mind and uh, you don't have to worry about uh, having that wire go out and then come back in and then go to different places just thought I'd share that for a quick update I ended up purchasing this also I got it from aircraft spruce it's a little, little shrink bag, shrink bag here. Um, so this is the LC50 lighting controller. There's a number of them out there, a number of ways you could have done this. Um, you know, maybe I would have used the Garmin, but you know, this was $160, I think, or so. But uh, it allows me to have um, controls for both the Garmin equipment that requires just a reference voltage for the dimming. And then also it'll work for the uh, the pulse modulated type lighting, which I'm going to have for some of the red lights and stuff that it's going to be there for at night. And then I figured I'll just mount this <clears throat> in here. Likely I'll mount it right here behind this. It doesn't require a lot of space. It's going to be pretty easy, uh, pretty easy to run. But uh, I just figured I'd do this. That way I don't have to worry about it. And you could do it with you know, a single controller, you know, the pulse controllers, you could put a, a low pass filter on them if you're into uh, electronics. Uh, that would work. Um, you could just use a standard pot, which I was looking at doing, and I think I showed that before. Uh, but, you know, it ultimately came just a little painful to try and wire it all in, the, the space you needed, and uh, the maintenance that would might be required later on. So I just figured it'd be easier just to do this. Uh, use this unit and it came with everything it came with the pots that you can use though they'll need to be trimmed and they don't have a a, sh a place to lock it on so I'll have to look at that it comes with the wiring and obviously the instructions but I figured I'd, uh, I'd share that 
And again, as I make progress on that, I'll, uh, I'll share that with, uh, with you guys as well. Anyway, there you have it. Cheers. Another thing I thought I'd share, you know, I had made, uh, this is actually for the elevator trim. I uh, made that quite a while ago and I had the wires sitting here, but I hadn't terminated them. Well, actually I did have a terminator on them, but I didn't have, you know, I didn't sit down and figure out how exactly I was going to have it connect and have strain relief and everything else. So I just figured I'd show this as well. So what I did is I made a little bracket. Uh, you'll notice I just pull rivets in here, but basically put the connector on here. This gives it a nice solid place to connect. I put some heat shrink tubing around that and then some strain relief on the back. Uh, not that I really needed that, but now I've got a nice place to, uh, to plug in. I haven't got to worry about it. And really, you know, over the next little while, my goal here is to, to kind of finish off the little things like this that are gonna come back and needle me later. Um, so basically, you know, making sure that I've got these done. I'm also right here, I did not, do the doublers for the uh, antennas. So I made up some plates, I'm gonna drill those out. They came with this, which may be just fine, uh, but I couldn't tell, I wasn't sure. So it's pretty easy to make the doubler. I had this material lying around. I had purchased from Aircraft Spruce and uh, you know, it's pretty thick. It's very hard. I don't need to bend it or anything else but it'll make for a nice surface. And then all I did was here kind of lay out a grid pattern. So once I put the initial hole, then I'll use this grid pattern to figure out where I want to put uh, my rivets uh, onto the skin. But when I tested this on the plane with just this bracket, I mean, it flexed a bit. I really didn't think it would matter, but you know, for the amount of work it's involved in just putting this on, I just figured it'd be safe than sorry. And, uh, I'll, uh, I'll show that when I, when I actually go through the making of that. 